Elmer's Auto and Toy Museum is our dad's lifelong collection located here in Fountain City, Wisconsin. Probably the effort of 50 plus years of collecting. You get in here, there's five buildings full of collector items and plus the house. I think it's something that you could come up here and visit it numerous times and see some new every time. My dad's collection was definitely a passion. It was an addiction. My dad enjoyed collecting uh, everything and he enjoyed sharing it even more. I think that uh, my dad started collecting because when he was a kid, he was too poor. They didn't, uh, they didn't have toys. Uh, Elmer, when he was a young child, he's seven years old, his mother passed away. And uh, so life was never easy for him. He, he started working on uh, fixing kids' uh, bicycles. He was the, the fix-it uh, person in town. If you needed a bike, um, he could fix you a bike. He delivered newspapers, started buying and selling cars. By the time he was 18, he had uh, sold, bought and sold 42 different cars. Dad's main business was the, the auto salvage yard that we still have running here. It sits on about 50 acres. We have 1,800 classic cars, and then we have our normal daily salvage yard that we service businesses in the auto repair industry and auto body industry. He was a go-getter. He believed in working hard. He believed in working every moment that he possibly could stay awake. Not only was a good businessman, he was a good friend to many, and he helped many people. He made one of the best friends. He's very compassionate. He, he was able to help anybody out if they needed help. He wasn't afraid to do that. Elmer worked a lot, but when you love what you do, it's not work. So that's how he looked at it. And there was things he loved more than just having the salvage journey. He loved cars, so he started collecting cars. My dad truly believed in originality, so he, he liked to keep things in its original form where some people would say, oh, it would look better if you redid it, and that wasn't how my dad was. You know, he, he bought cars, and he, he liked uh, low mileage, one owner cars. In the collection, there's a 1978 Corvette with 5.4 miles on it. Elmer bought that brand new. He kept what he liked, and also what mom liked too, because there's a 59 um, and pal convertible up there. She liked convertibles. That was her car. They always say behind every good man is a, is a great woman, and that's what she was. Mom was very supportive. Uh, she was his bookkeeper, his secretary. She was the love of his life. They, they, they did everything together. I mean, as a family, we went to a lot of car shows. She was a very hard worker and uh, helped with the salvage art as far as paperwork and managing and um, constantly making sure everybody that worked up here got fed and taken care of and was comfortable. She was a good lady. Towards the end, I can remember, sometimes she would tell him, she says, Elmer, enough is enough. Can you play with what you have before you buy more? In the museum, we have three large pole barn buildings. Uh, those are primarily filled with the full-size cars, uh, interspersed with a bunch of motorcycles, bicycles, scooters, and then the walls are lined with pedal cars. Um, we have an old hay barn that is mixed with older cars, pedal cars, pedal tractors, pedal airplanes, and some toys. Pedal cars were definitely his passion, and anytime he could find one or get a decent buy on it, he would drag it home, and when you thought the building was full, it was amazing. He always found room to put a few more in until he finally had to build another. We have almost 800 pedal cars, airplanes, tractors, even a couple pedal train, like locomotive type pieces. He liked original ones the best. I mean, they're only original once. Once you restore them or repaint them, they aren't original anymore. Well, he had the best of the best pedal cars, traveled miles to accumulate them. He had a wide network of pedal car people that probably were all constantly calling him. If he heard about it that night, that morning, he'd go. He'd drop things and just take off and go for it. He had some people that built them from scratch and they made some very unique pieces. They're one of a kind. Back in 1969 and 70, the, the Daytona and the Superbird, he bought both of those brand new, but nobody made pedal cars of a Superbird and Daytona. He knew of a gentleman that did some Camaro pedal cars for him. So the guy measured up and dad commissioned four Daytonas, four Superbirds. He 
loved motorcycles, loved riding motorcycles and scooters. Harleys, Indians, scooters, Vespas, Cushmans. Elmer collected pretty much anything with wheels. And he kind of had, to some extent, a little bit of an obsessive personality. You know, who would go this crazy on antiques and cars and everything, you know, he, but he, he did what he loved and, and, that, and he, loved, he loved anything with wheels. We used to say if it had wheels, he had to have it. He, he couldn't leave it behind. But more than that, his passion was sharing it with others. He didn't want it just for himself. So when he was able to open the museum and share it with everyone, that was his true love. The barn is unique because it's so tall and there's stuff up in the rafters. Large scale train sets in there, motorcycles, there's tricycles, uh, wagons, tools, uh, even old lawnmowers. Most everything he bought was word of mouth or auction or somebody knew somebody had had it. He developed contacts through the years, like the pickers, Mike would stop in morning, stop in at night, and we'd come home and say, like, Dad, where'd you get that stuff from? Oh, this guy dropped it off, his name was Mike. Elmer was a collector of history. The sheer numerical number of items, the size of what's encompassed in, in the museum, you'll understand that it's uh, endless hours. There's not enough hours in the day to, uh, to take care of everything. And he and my mom did, they were, they were incredible. He always made sure he was a student of whatever he was collecting. He would become an expert. He would read and read and read and, and even became, you know, one of the experts with his Elmer's Price Guide to Toys books that were published in, in the mid-90s. He enjoyed every minute of everyone here, laughing, smiling, talking about what they had maybe growing up or what they had seen or what they sold and he just loved to share everything that he had. He loved to talk with people, tell the stories, sit and listen, and share with their loves and his loves of the toys and cars. And My dad enjoyed collecting uh, everything and he enjoyed sharing it even more. He, even when he was very sick at the end, he, was, he would be outside sitting in his wheelchair talking with our guests at the museum. He had a lot of fun in his life and the cancer uh, took away that fun, but the things that he collected, they're still here, and he wants other people to enjoy and have fun with those, as he did. The decision to uh, sell uh, the collection of my father's was a very difficult decision. There's, uh, there's six children, and we all had to agree, but ultimately it was my dad's wish to, uh, to be able to sell uh, the items and uh, ultimately to share them with the rest of the world in hopes that uh, people that bought them would like them as much as he did. This is an opportunity to get something really great and something to remember. A great uh, museum, a great history up here. I mean, this will be unsurpassed. There'll, there'll never be another collection like this ever. Anybody that gets a piece of Dad's collection, I, I hope that they appreciate it like he had. My hope for somebody that buys from my dad's collection is somebody that's going to love it, enjoy it, use it. My parents put their lives into it, um, their heart and soul. It's time to share the collection with others in a larger sense than just what we can do here in amongst our small buildings and on our small property. So it, dad would want it to be out there so that people can continue to see it and continue to enjoy it.